Hey, this is Mateo Lane. I'm Emma Wilman. And this is Inside the Closet. Inside the Closet. <laughs> okay, today we are here with uh, Buddy Zara Berry. Hi. Zara Berry. Hi, Zara. How are you guys? Good, how are you? I'm good. What a lovely name. I love your store. Oh, yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I actually told everybody that my parents owned that store. Ooh. <laughs> That's good. Because kids believe that kind of shit. Oh, everyone. I like, I sold it. I came in with a picture of like the Fifth Avenue location. Oh, and I was no. like, yeah, this is my store. And I was like such a great little actress. And everyone <laughs> believed me until somebody like asked their mom. And then their mom said that it wasn't true. And then I got completely called out. Same thing happened to me when I lied and said I was on Guts. Wait, Remember what happened? I, first of all, guts. what happened when you, you got called out? Too? No, I mean I just had to admit defeat. Were you mortified? Or were no, you like, because hey, I told kids. a lot of tall tales. Like right. I said, I was on guts. I was never on guts. Guts was a show on Nickelodeon. If if you don't remember, and it had a British host, no, a British referee. Yeah, and then uh, who? What was the name of the host again? Oh, I don't remember. And they always had three oh, kids who were padded slime? up. Was there slime involved? Yeah, there was definitely, yeah. like, got slimed if you didn't win. And there was, like, the, what was the mountain they climbed at the very oh end? Oh, my God, yes. Um, do you guys remember the mountain they climbed at the end? Can you Google it, Tyler? The mountain they climbed <laughs> in the guts? My favorite was they would always have two guys and a girl, and they were all, that they always were just, like, gauze and, like, yeah. glasses, and just nothing made sense. They would be, they I would be taken by a rope and little thrown. memories of this. I remember, like, I remember, did people, did you say the guts lie after the Zara lie? No, the guts lie was first, so okay. I already had a reputation. That's a believable one, because there wasn't reruns then, so you could say I was on guts and then. And I went and then... to L.A. to, like, visit family, and I came back uh-huh. and was like, yeah, I was in L.A. shooting. Temple, Legends of the Hidden Temple, oh, yes. Brandon, was my favorite show. That was, that was the best show, Legends of the, did you not watch Nickelodeon as no, a kid? No, I didn't, my parents, I grew up, where I grew up, my mom, we, like, had didn't have cable, and then when my parents got divorced, my dad got cable to, like, bribe us to come oh. over, but but that was probably like, that was like I was in high school by then. And at so, that point, you're like, you don't give a shit. Right. No, it's like 90210 Melrose Place. Yes. No, where did you grow up to? I was born in New York City, and then we moved to Connecticut. Mm. Ugh, the worst. Hated it. <laughs> and then I moved to L.A. when I was 17, and then I moved to London when I was 21, where my, my parents are, or my mom's English. And then I moved to New York, and then like I've just sort of been like sifting all over the place. And Damn! So you I know I don't have a home. But you've been to great. I mean, I besides feel that way a lot. Okay, you've been to some great city, like London, L.A., yeah. New York. Like you're very worldly. I I, I guess slash traumatized because I like moved <laughs> to all these places at 17 with no parental guidance. Right. <laughs> do you did think you, you did you do the lying? Do you think to like as a way to like make friends, or what do you think it was? I I think I just like I it came too naturally to me, mm. and now I've honed that skill, and like I don't I. Never now I had to go cold turkey. Like, now I can't even tell a small lie because if I do, I'll like fall back into a horrible cycle of it. So, I. So, was yeah. lying like a big issue for you your whole life? No, just as a kid. Yeah. I mean, I'm kid. the youngest of four. Did you lie, Mateo? Because I used to lie. Mm, you still lie. Well, you tell people you go whitewater rafting on dates. Oh, well, this is. Oh, my God. Well, that's the gayest went, thing she, I've ever I know, heard. but it's because I don't have any actual interests. That's so, a lie. That's a lie. I all my interests. I feel like my interests aren't things that I feel comfortable saying on dates. She's a stand-up comedian yes, in New but, York City oh, and thinks she has got nothing to offer but I, to no, people. I do, but I'm not well-rounded. So I know it's mean. not like I can't say like the idea. If someone says, "What do you do for fun?" or something like that, to me is insane. Well, like, and a, I can't be like, "What are you talking about fun?" Like, what do you mean? Yeah, fun? I don't, yeah, I can relate to what that. What are you talking? But don't about? you agree that if you live in New York, you become sort of in your own bubble and you don't really know what's happening? Like my boyfriend's here, and I'm trying to show him around New York City. I don't, I don't know. This is the Lower yeah. East Side. Does it look cool? Like I don't know where to go. And also, I mean, he's here to see you, so you don't have to like. That's true. You know, he's really cute. He's oh, a he's, hunk, a hunk of burning. I'm gonna have to start <laughs> lying like, to people as to why hunk. he's with me. He's a hunk. He's super hunk. I mean, someone. So you're hunk. Yeah. I'm all, I'm fine. I'm not saying I'm bad, but it's like that. You know what I mean? Like people, <laughs> people stop me, and be like, "How did you get that?" No, they don't. No I, way. I have told people. I said he has no feet. No one has <laughs> stopped you and said that. There's no way. I have, yes, I yes. People said, "Wow, how did you get that?" I've that heard that yeah. multiple times. Yeah, that person's an asshole. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, it's a true thing are you sure was it a gay who said what that? am i making it up or yeah, i just don't know if someone no, actually straight people but a lot of like the way people say it like because he's so good looking the way people will talk about it is they'll be like can you not hear me at all i'm wondering they'll if someone say, said something and that's how you interpreted it like if yeah. they're like oh you guys no, are cute together say, and then wow he's heard. so good looking and i'm like thank you i know i know I've had that with people I've dated before where they'll be like oh good job i'm like thanks like, yeah I, yeah i made it myself or i don't know what they expect um 
are your parents cool with you being a lesbian? They are. I mean, at first it was, I think it was a little bit of a shock, even though I've been like, I'm one of those people, I knew I was a lesbian, like when I was a little, little kid. That's, like I I've been I... lusting after girls my whole life. Well, I knew I was a lesbian when I was <laughs> four. Yeah, I the same way. I knew I was gay when yeah. I was like four or five. I knew I was, but then I had boyfriends in college. But right now the person I'm going on dates with is a lesbian. They're a lesbian. I've dated, and it's been, it's very different for me. Oh, well, oh do and you I normally really go like for her. like, she's great. I'm back it? on. We've had, it's been turbulent, but it's back on. I have made it very obvious I'm not too keen on the relationship with this girl. Can but I we... think I'm falling in love. Oh, my God. I think I want to get married. Are you sure it's not? It's like love or it's not oxytocin? What's that What's mean? the difference? Okay. Uh, let me explain because this epiphany changed my life. Ooh. And I, 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 like I thought learned oxytocin about it. is like, that's like a painkiller. Isn't that a No, cereal? that's Oxycontin. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's oh. Oxycontin. I'm trying not to drink so much. <laughs> um... <clears throat> So basically, when women have an orgasm, they release oxytocin, which is a hormone. Yes, and we've been connect- we connect really and well. And you feel like you're like, oh, like it, it's it's backed by science. It's biological. It goes back to like the olden days when we were supposed to just procreate. So say we had sex with a, a man, and then we went into oxytocin. Then we'd want to nurture him and care for him, so we could be like the nurturers, and he could go out and kill lions for us. Did my boyfriend release oxytocin in me? Because that's no. all I want to do for him. <laughs> men Did... don't release it the same way. Like oh, the that's men so release it over over time. So women, especially two women, are both like having orgasms. They release oxytocin. They start to feel like they're super connected. That like, oh my God, maybe this person is the one. That's so You get high on it like it's a drug. Normally, like in a heterosexual relationship, the girl's feeling it, but maybe the guy isn't. But with lesbians, it's like we're both in oxytosis. Right. And there's this great book called Lesbian Love Addiction. That's how I found out about this. I was writing a story about like lesbian love addiction. I did all this research. And yeah, I mean, then the oxytocin Hmm. wears off. And you can and be like, like, who the fuck is this? Fuck, who the fuck is this? Because I always think well, of how gender... do you, how does it wear off? Like, wouldn't you keep because getting the oxytocin it when you keep dies down? Sex? You haven't had a hit, and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, we don't have anything in common. Like, why are you fucking because talking this, about? Because it's always gonna, yeah, it's always gonna like the the oxytocin <laughs> rush is like something that happens in the beginning that makes you feel bonded quickly. But over time, you know, the sex. That's why lesbians you haul. That's quote unquote. A hundred percent. I just wrote a piece about this today. And that's why gays have escape ropes with them when they go on their first (laughs) dates. Exactly. Just get out of there. I always think of gender as like pretty socially constructed, but then this would be like. No, this is biological. Okay. There is a biological difference with it, with yeah, testosterone, estrogen, like the way, mm-hmm. like uh, yeah, of course. But then some women can have more testosterone. Yes, exactly, yes. and that does affect oxytocin. I have the extra testosterone, why so I have skin problems. Uh, you have extra testosterone. Yeah, because that's where my hormonal acne was coming from. And when I, I asked a dermatologist, I said, "Is this why I'm gay?" And they went, uh, and we're very uncomfortable. You asked your dermatologist yeah, they if go, that's why you're gay. Your acne is all hormonal. I thought, I've wondered that you've myself. got too much. You've got too much testosterone. <laughs> yeah. so they gave Do I have me a too blocker. much estrogen? I feel like I have testosterone because I, I have like all the patterns of men who have too much testosterone. Even but, though I am wearing a sundress right now, but I mean, I you know, <laughs> I don't. Well, that's really interesting with oxytocin. I feel like I killed the conversation. I didn't with know. That comment. I didn't but, know that about. I didn't even, I've oh, never even heard of that Once word. you realize it, it, it like, you'll never look at it the same way again. It's why people like, we do irrational things in the name of love. It's because like, we're feeling actually bonded to this person, but so then how we do might you know not if know you that. love them, but it's not oxytocin. You have to, it, that's, you, like, if you survive, time. yeah, I after, liked, it's very good. I yeah. really like talking to her because there's been people I have, I have felt that for where it was just like very sexual. And then I, I really was with someone that I like, but we didn't have a very sexual relationship. Yeah. But I really liked her personality. And then this one, I feel it's both. Well, I mean, you don't but, know yet. That's the thing. Is I, I, right. I personally think you can't love somebody that you don't know and that when you feel like you're having love at first sight, as poetic and wonderful as that is, it's usually like you're fucked up on oxytocin. But then what about Shit. gays? What, is, what about me? What am I? I mean, that's why I think when you guys fall, it's He's probably... Very in love. You're more... You know. You, you yeah, know more. Yeah, I've, ne- I've only... I like have, I've never really been in love, ever. And so then now I'm dating my boyfriend and I'm like... Mm. Like I'm like a... I'm obsessed. I mean, then I think that you're probably like Actually your feelings are. Yeah, I do. Should I mean, I, these are like I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. <laughs> oh, I will believe I'm anything nothing. you say to me. <laughs> but well, I am Ellen obsessed. I, I was taking yeah. notes. Yeah. I'm obsessed with this whole concept <laughs> because. So should I try to like not like have sex with her for a little bit? I, I I mean, no. You know what I say? Just like That's have the only thing fun you while it lasts. No, it's not. I really like talking to her. She's really funny, and I really like listening about her life. 
I mean, I've thought that about people I've dated too, where I'm like, they're so brilliant. We have so much in common. And then the oxytocin wears off. And I'm like, you're a narcissistic sociopath. And I might even hate you. Because that was my last relationship. I did have that. Because when you said narcissistic sociopath, that was triggering. And I remember my last relationship. <laughs> that was triggering. I remember that. And we moved in really quick. And it was like yeah. red flag, red flag. Oh, yeah, yeah, But with yeah. this one... It feels different, but I guess that's what people probably always say. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're taking it slower, right? Yeah, yeah. Just don't move Sl- in. Don't just don't you. She all. doesn't live around here, and she's 24, so Ooh. she just turned. 24. She doesn't live around here, or doesn't live in this country, <laughs> and she's 24. Oh, just she's turn- very nice, very pretty. She seems very intelligent. Yeah, I don't think that she is looking for a relationship, and I think yeah, because that- one night we were going to hang out, and then she went to a, um, a leather party instead. But that's totally fine. Which we don't have to like be monogamous. Gay, sounds okay. like you're dating a gay man. Doesn't <laughs> yeah. want a commitment, just wants to have sex, keeping you at a distance and going to a leather party. Right. I mean, it sounds like a recipe for, like, longing and obsession, which I like. Like, I tend to fall for that. Like, if someone, it, like, if a woman doesn't live near me, if maybe she, there's, like, a big age difference... What's the I, biggest age difference you've done? I've done some. Pre- when I was younger, like I, I used to go for da- like lady daddies. A oh, little bit. I used to do daddy daughter <laughs> yeah. role play all the time, and I loved it. I used yeah. To do that. Oh, I, I still I lo- like it. I it's used hot. to do that. Yeah, I used to do that all the time. And then some. This one girl really flipped the script, and it. We didn't end up doing it, but it really messed my head up because I've been doing daddy daughter play all the time. And then she <laughs> She's said, "The daddy." Yeah, I was the daddy, yeah, yeah. which is funny because in the rest of my life, I'm like not very like authoritative. But I'm down for whatever with sex stuff. But then I was with talking to this one person, and she was into um, like mommy son role play. Oh, mommy son role yeah. play. So were you like the mommy or the son? The son. You're not into mother son. daughter role one. play. <laughs> no. You'd be like a like a mean mom. No, like Pretty punishment. Kind of and thing. then you come. The no mom. <laughs> oh, the mom. The mom son one. I thought seemed like fun. You were the son. We didn't end up doing it. But then I looked at a bunch of like mom son porn. And it was fun because it gives the woman. They have mom son porn. Yeah, but it yeah, gives them a lot of age. It gives the woman a lot of agency because then the woman's like it's more like the younger boy, like the pool boy. But yeah. usually when people are like poking around with like incest stuff, they say, "Oh, I'm interested in like stepfather, stepdaughter." Yeah. And then if the girl's like. Oh, then you can be like, okay, let's do daddy daughter. But you have to like test the waters with, with step. step. Yeah. You've never had anyone that's into that? No, I feel like I'm very boring in that sense. <laughs> Maybe we're just really damaged. Yeah. No, like I'm that pretty, could be part of it. I think I'm pretty damaged. Will you be with someone that is not into that sexual stuff? I know. I mean, I, I, I know they don't have to be into like that particular role play. But does sex every time have to be like that no, overt? Like... It used to have to be. Me but too. then I went to, to therapy to and they yeah. were like, you are just like replaying traumas and trying to have a reparative experience and you're afraid of intimacy. Mm. So I worked through that for a long time and now I can just like definitely have an orgasm from good old fashioned sex and that's the best sex. But. I don't think I could be with somebody who didn't want to like play around. Yeah, no, you yeah. have to be able to play short. around. Yeah, it's like one of the only things to look forward to, <sighs> right? to be honest. You know, when you get older, it's like you stop doing drugs, you stop yeah. doing this. It's like, what else do I have left? Totally. Daddy daughter. <laughs> daddy daughter. That's about it. You know what? I don't do heroin anymore. I do daddy, daddy daughter. daughter role play. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I haven't done that role play in like years. Can we do it? I don't even know how that would work. No, All right, no, ready? No, no. Like, hi. <laughs> I'm I haven't done daddy it. Daddy in- daughter. Well, I'm the daughter. I'm the queen of England. This is the only voice I can do right now. Hello. I Because I used to be, I was like dating a lot. I used to be like killing it and then I got in a rut. And then, mm. then everything's been to shit, except for right now. My crush. Yes. But like up before that, I was having real problems, which leads me to something I want to Okay. So how do you, because so like how Zara and I met, she did a, it was at Elite Daily and we'll post the video, did this really funny video. Yeah. How do you like meet, like you seem like a cool, confident, collected lesbian. No, how no, do no. you do that? I, okay. First of all, I'm not. But second of all, just backing track, because I Please. remember when I first met her yes. and we were doing, we were filming at that place in Bushwick. I can't remember the name. And it was like some club in Bushwick. Applebee's. Applebee's, probably. <laughs> um, so we were at Lot 45. Yes. So we were filming there, and I was like sitting quietly, as I'm like want to do because I'm shy. And then you started talking about, and I had written, they had sent an article. It was based this. on something I had written. And uh, so they had like sent everybody who was doing it the article as a reference point. It was called Why Lesbians Are Better at Picking Up Girls in Bars Than Straight Men. Right. And I said it made me uncomfortable, I think. No, you didn't. I don't think you knew I wrote it. But you started like talking for a really long time. Like you knew all the other lesbians there. It was like a lesbian comedy cult like 
thing, and I was yeah. just like the writer. I mean, I acted in it, but I was the writer. But I definitely didn't know but at that were... time you had written it. <laughs> no, and you're Did like, you insult it? Yo, yeah. It was okay, though. Oops. You were probably right. Like, I, I bullshit it, I'm sure, through that whole piece. I think it was... Uh... You were like, this is not accurate. I can't relate to this. And I was, like, texting somebody I was dating at the time, and I was like, uh... <laughs> So there's a lesbian here who really hates it. Who doesn't like it? <laughs> it, it must have been only because I don't feel good at like picking up. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. That's what it. That's oh no, what, no, no! You weren't mean at all. But I've been in, I've been in that situation where it's like after comedy shows and you can hear people talking and they'll be yeah. like, "Oh, like I loved this one and that one," and then you're like right there. And all right, let's like, pretend I'm at a bar, you're... Emma, and you think I'm really hot. No, I've never so done that you, in my whole you, life. But we're I did we're that going one time. Through the scenario right now. Okay? Yeah, let's let's let's. So improv. I'm drinking, okay, and then you have to come up to me. <laughs> No. Uh, yeah, Emma. We, I feel like what, Emma, this isn't real. But then it's like all the. Pr- I feel like all the pressure. I got always all just, the. I'm gonna I wait. So I'm a really. The no, rest of my life. I'm a really beautiful girl sitting at a bar, alone. Which means she went alone, especially to a lesbian bar because she wants to be spoken to. Yeah, she's got some kind of problem. What? Oh. Okay, Emma. She's a psycho. All right, we're waiting. <laughs> um. Hey, how you doing? Uh, hello. Um. I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. That's good. Um. Are you from the area? No, I'm from Washington State. Oh, nice. See, this is when you go in and you have to be like, hey, like, I, I like to. Yeah, I hate that girl already. All right, let's do it. Let's you and I do it, okay? okay? Right. I, can, I can tell you're a cool, calm, collected I'm lesbian. Not, I'm I not. I can tell. I'm not at all. But She's I, even backing away. <laughs> I know. This all right, is what ready? I do okay. <clears throat> hey. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> oh, hello. But, How are you? Uh, I'm great. How are you? Uh, what are you? What are you doing? Are you by yourself? Uh, yes, yeah, so I just nice. wanted a drink. Um, I had a long day at work today, so I wanted oh, a drink. okay, yeah, I had a long day too. So, what do you do? Oh, um, I run a daycare center for cats. Oh my god, <laughs> that's when I would like run. The- then you run the other direction, screaming because. But there see, is that going was to great. Like- but you were already more confident. Yeah, that was great. And then also the other thing, because I feel like since. I look visibly gay. Then if I say it, then it seems like threatening or something. But like what? if you say it, it's like more like friendly. I, I don't know. I mean, I think I, I'm bad at approaching women. Like I'll be the first to admit it. But I also feel like women don't talk to me ever. Right. Because they're like, is she a lesbian? And I'm like. Yeah. yeah do you get that? Do you get that a lot? And even at gay bars. People often don't know that I'm gay. <laughs> I mean, so, I think I used really to get it. I think I used to get it, but I think now because I've like I've written seven thousand. Not kidding, I've written seven thousand fucking articles on the internet. <laughs> like a lesbian's them, allowed to have a long haircut. You know, it's like, it's I, like yeah. article one. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Like I can't even stand those articles anymore. That I feel like people, I out myself really fast. Yeah, you know. Well, it is rude to think that. Like, I hate when I'm with people. Like, like if I my friend Alex, who's in Chicago, she she's one of my best friends, and she's very femme, long hair you know and yeah. people say is she really a lesbian and right. it's like why are you constantly making people defend themselves what, what yeah. a horrible thing to say like if someone's a lesbian yes it's just right. this weird mentality of like oh well that they can't possibly actually be oh a lesbian. yeah i mean when i first came out and i was living in la when i first came out and i feel like i i distinctly remember like some like really masculine woman being like you're a pillow princess if you're really gay and I was like, I didn't know what that meant, but I didn't want to say it. I don't know what that it. means now. It means like you're like a, it's it's a stereotype of like a femme girl who just lays on the pillow and lets like the top do things to her, but doesn't do anything in return, which is not me at all. But I remember being like, what does this even mean? And she's like, if you are really gay. And that was my first Was experience. she trying to like challenge you? Was yeah. she trying to flirt with you to be yeah, like, I think prove so. that that's not the case? I think so. I think that's, and lesbians have some fucked up mind games with the I know. Yeah. I always, yeah. to me I'm always like god lesbians have it way more together than gay men I used to I, always, I, I used to be so scared of like lesbian like shows like I would get so nervous oh, if lesbians are there because Martha I'd be like Stewart. I feel like they would like see right through me and I'd be like just like yeah. really scared but then gay men I wouldn't feel that way but then Mateo feels more comfortable being performing for lesbians. Now I feel more comfortable around lesbians. Yeah, I feel more comfortable there. now for gays and lesbians. But it, sometimes it can be tricky when you're like a gay man in front of gay of men. Course. Because then they're like, where's Kathy Griffin? Like, right. they're just not yeah, yeah, yeah. happy with me. But normally but it can I go also, well. But also, and this brings in something interesting that I've been grappling with a lot lately. And like... Why are we so hard on each other as gay oh. people? Oh, my because God. That's such a good question. My shit lands so well with straight, like, girls. Like, yeah. that's my audience. They love it. They oh, can that's take so a joke. Or, like, even gay men or straight men. But lesbians are, lesbians like, you're are problematic. That's right. <laughs> your existence is problematic. And it's, like, pick your arguments here. Like, I know. 
Yeah, ease I think up. We, I think we have a lot totally. of healing to do as a community. <laughs> what do they say I you're do. problematic really about? Everything. I mean, I can't, first of all, like, you can't have a sense of humor if you work in, I feel like, in lesbian media in particular. Right. And, like, I, I'm not a comedian like you guys, but... I have, like, a very dark sense of humor, and I'm, like, very, very open. I'm British, and, like, that – and that's been, like, my lifeline, survival tactic. But it doesn't work with the majority of the lesbian audience. Not like, all, because you have to disclaim, because we right. can't put everyone under an umbrella. Right. Generally but speaking, general, gay men are easier to sit and bitch with. What do they usually yeah. get offended by? Like, if I make a joke, like, oh, I was she wearing my whole, lesbian leather jacket. <laughs> They don't like that if you say you use a lesbian leather jacket. I mean, I've had, like, tweets being like, you know, that's really, like, you're contributing to fem erasure. Like, I get fuck like that. Like, I was, fuck you. Okay, I posted a picture last night. This is along the same lines as yeah. how sensitive people are on Twitter. But I posted a picture I saw on Twitter of the Olsen twins at the Met Gala, and I posted it. And I said, I genuinely go, I love that they had cigarette bowls as an appetizer yes! at their wedding. That's my favorite it's my thing favorite ever. my favorite thing ever. This guy writes me today. Are you today, kidding me? Yeah, yeah they had bowls of cigarettes. Mary Dead Kate serious. did. These are jo- this is a joke you're saying. Dead serious. No, they, this they, is they, like a euphemism. Dead no, Mary serious. Kate wow. had bowls of cigarettes. cigarettes. She wow. married a French guy. I love it. it. She's just keeping it so real. She's a good show. host. And I said that, and then this guy goes, how dare you uh, body shame her? How dare you this? How dare you? And I go, body shame? I said, what? I was like, I literally said, here's a picture of them. And then I said, I love that they had cigarettes at their wedding. And he kept going in. He's like, how dare? Like, was so angry at me. And I was like, people are literally looking for problems oh, where so they don't exist. Just reporting back. I was talking to someone who said that they went to this uh, wedding and it was like a super rich wedding. And I don't know if that, that these two things are connected, but they had bowls of Adderall at the wedding. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. At the My wedding kind party. of wedding. I know. She was like, it was like a real like party club vibe. All right. They had what Adderall. would we have bowls of if we could? Something along the line of that. Tissues. Ah. Uh, I don't know. I, I condoms. I don't know. I think I'd go with cigarettes. That'd be fabulous. Grab one, smoke, dance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't even smoke anymore, but I love the concept of bowls of cigarettes. Oh, it's for yeah, fabulous. Sure. Even if you're so not chic. smoking them, yes. There was a place in LA I used to go to when I was younger, and they had bowls of cigarettes. It was like Ooh. an Italian restaurant that, like, it was like an industry place, like a low key one, and I thought it was so chic. It yeah, is, but chic. I'm problematic. Cool. See, right? But it's not. Pro- well, please. My mother was also a cigarette model. My mom was a model, and she was on a billboard when I was younger. Oh wow! For Winston cigarettes, with like holding like a cigarette. Like, did a- she smoke cigarettes? Not she had quit by then, by the time I was born. But of course she smoked. She right. was like a model in London. I yeah. hope she smoked. Right? Yeah, you, <laughs> you have know? to smoke yeah. to get the job. You have, exactly. You uh, better be smoking. Did we have yeah. questions we want to answer? From yeah, people? we have some writers' questions. But I want to say this. So I think are you by yourself is really good. And then also saying did you come from work. And then when you say you just came from work too, then they go, oh, what do you do? Yeah. And then you. But see, then I don't like saying what I do. I don't like talking about like all I want to talk about is entertainment. But then also I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I feel you. So then because it's alienating to talk about entertainment with people who are not in the industry. Yeah. So then if someone's and it also like, yeah, so someone says, what do you do? I go, oh, then we're I white water raft, I apple pick. Yeah. I I say I I say I work at Sirius XM. And then they say, what do you do? I say uh, I co-host the show. Yeah, but you know How what? did you get I that you job? I'm a comedian. It. It's like, but you should say it because if the person can't handle it and their mind is so like they're so mind fucked by the fact that you're a comedian, then yeah, that's not the right. Or I could say I'm a comedian, but don't you know? Google me. No, ex- no expectations. <laughs> oh, for you to be. F- oh. Yeah, just just we gotta chill it out oh, right yeah, now because the thing yeah. is too is I'm like I when people try to be on that's the worst. That's why I never like meeting uh. anyone at shows because if you meet someone, the time you would get approached is if. You meet someone and they've seen you had a good show. So then they've got this like misconception of you, but yeah. they approach you with the same. E- I've found this hasn't doesn't happen a lot. The same of, energy you perform that you've with. had on stage, but yeah. that energy and that set has taken forever to cultivate. So you're seeing like an a- yeah. fifteen to an hour of like stuff that I've thought about for years at this point. So then they're coming up trying to match that, and it's that all you want to do after a show is go think about like oh I said bagel, I should have said muffin. You know yeah. what I mean? It's very yeah, neurotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is a very neurotic time you, right after your set. Do you mm-hmm. find that for both of you that like people also feel like they might know you more than they yes. know you? Yes. Because I get that because I write a lot of confessional essays. Yes. Do you yes. tell people to not read that? Yes. And I is that do. fair to ask them? Uh, probably not. Because yeah. I asked the Canadian not to listen and she listened one time and I was very embarrassed. What was her feedback? Well, she was like, I'm a feedback, little upset feedback. because I had mentioned to her that I, ha- I had – 
slept with my ex. I stopped okay. drinking again recently. But I had mentioned that I had slept with my ex, but I had already told her that. But it was on the podcast. But my sexual confidence had been in the gutter with this yeah. last ex. And then uh, now my sexual confidence is like back and kicking because of the Canadian. Yeah. So after I had sex with the ex, I said on the podcast that I, I told the ex, I go, we can thank uh, Canada for that because like that, like my sexual confidence was, was back. Yeah. And then she said something which is so understandable. She was like, it just felt hurtful that you were like talking about me with someone else after you just had sex with them. And I go, yeah, you're in the, you're correct. Yeah. Which is why she shouldn't listen though. Right. You know, I mean, I think, right. I find it hard to navigate this whole mess too. I mean, I tell people not to read things. But I know that most of the time they do because, like, two drinks in, they'll mention something. And, and of I'm course like, they do because you know because how could they – I dated one person once who worked at a podcast and they would have her fill in sometimes. I We went on, like, four dates. I went back and listened to every time yeah. she stepped in on that for – I mean, I went back, like, eight years. Yeah. And that was just – she just would fill in sometimes. Yeah. I was digging for stuff. Of course. But I think – then you have to understand if you're going to listen or read or whatnot, you have to understand that like that's not really getting to know them. You have exactly. to like leave it a little bit. I think you know. There's also exactly. something too about as what would with we do with our jobs and our lives, and a lot of it is mining for gold. I mean, we're trying to mine anything oh. from our personal lives yeah. because. Honestly, that's very that's, exaggerated. That's our currency. Our jokes are our currency. So yeah. sometimes, even if you're on stage or if you're on a podcast, you're just spewing, and we don't see it as anything but spewing and just hearing jokes. <laughs> Other people are like, "Oh, wow, you're like talking shit about someone, or you're saying something yeah. really invasive." And it's like, "Oh no, I'm just trying to figure out what works with jokes." Like I had a friend; we were friends for a long time, and he stopped talking to me because he heard me talk shit about somebody on stage but i was like i said that one time talk shit about someone like, not even him. just like an inner like an inner not him no not at all but he's like oh god forbid that was me and blah 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 blah. and i was like no that's valid that's fair i mean i, I don't think being friends with a comedian or a performer or a writer is easy no. because we pull so much from our lives to try and see if any of it yeah works. that's very weird I'm well then you have to find email. somebody i think who just gets it because yeah, right. I feel like I, I've dated people in this kind of industry, and I, I kind of enjoy it. I mean, I, I kind of like when someone's making fun of me, and like I'm I'm worthy of being used as for material. But I'm also but probably you have just a good, like attention you have a, whore, and you have a good sense of humor. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot key. of people I that know. you. I have a whole bit about how gay Jesus is, and this woman was so furious with me, <laughs> and I was like, "You're I I listen in your world. I'm already going to hell. So why do you give a why shit? The, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm already on my way, and just because your boo doesn't mean you're." Going to was this was I there that night when With that happened? Marilyn? Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear her boo. She was this this whole time. It kept being like not funny. That's really? What she was saying. Oh my yeah. god! Because the crowd was like really hot. So all I saw, heard was, I mean, it was it was at the cellar. The sound of there well, so good. So I didn't hear that. And then you, you stopped. Did you notice I kept going back? Yeah, to her and I she was would kept talking. To she me. would she was saying to the person next to her. She was going to me doing comments. She would Ugh. say. Like this first, shaking her head no, and then she'd be like, not funny. And then I was like, wow. okay. I kept checking in with her, too. I was like, well, I'm going to do more. I'm going to say more. I wow. know. Don't go to a comedy show if you're going to be offended by Absolutely. a fucking Jesus joke. And by the way, Jesus is definitely more of a lesbian <laughs> than a gay man. Those Birkenstocks. You know what I mean? <laughs> Are you religious? No. 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 I'm well, like, I'm trying to find, I'd like to find God. I mean, I'd you know. like to find. I mean, I do. I, I, I like to like. You know, I've read the fucking books, and I, I like to throw good intentions and all that. But I'm not religious. Are you? No, I mean, I no, but I believe like in energy. Yeah. And, like I, be, I think that it's all just like a talking point. <laughs> like I'm into crystals. Like I got this in uh, North Carolina, and they're special stones that are supposed to cultivate peace. <laughs> I would love for and you I'm, to actually watch how those stones were made, and you'll see how not special they I are. I believe it. I believe that people just throw the word special on objects the, and people cling onto those objects the, in in kind of a way of throwing your emotions into something so it's something to hold on to. But I, I do notice when I'm not drinking because you mentioned you're not drinking right now. Yeah, it's kind of, I go I'm back I'm more into that. like crystals and shit when I'm not totally. drinking because you need something. I feel yeah. more spiritually centered. <laughs> By that bracelet? By the bracelet, by, yeah, not drinking, all the stuff. The not drinking is like a wildly, that makes perfect sense. But, but I'm <laughs> more bracelet. in tune when I'm not drinking so I can feel the power of the or bracelet. Or you just need something to, like, get a little buzz off it. I so do you, think like, this is believe. for real. You think that Are you bracelet, guys feeling anything right now? That, oh, that I'm looks feeling like, so much. It looks like I found that in Arizona. For Arizona like has great 325. crystals. Let's not I, say things we can't really... take back. There's so many people. I, the crystal thing blows my mind that people I know. confidently wear crystals. And I'm like, I mean, good for you. But also at the same time, that is minerals from the earth. 
Right, which are no connected to something. Around. Do you connected believe in astrology? Connected to what? Uh, Wait, wasn't yes. that in your video? Didn't we have something about astrology in Probably. That? I feel like there was. Yeah, I mean, because lesbians love, like, that's like that's a first date question, right. I feel yes. like. I feel Classic. like every lesbian is a cancer. You know what? So many lesbians are cancer. Because I'm cancer, that. and I feel very, very, like, like I feel very in, um, what's the word, in line, or I feel very yeah. um, with. You relate. I relate to a lot of, like, feminine I guess generalization of feminine, like being like emotional, emotional, and, and like yeah. intense, and sensitive, and love and, deeply, and all that. Yeah. Yes, yes. I didn't know that most lesbians were cancer. Well, I don't know if no, most it's a, are, but it's I feel like it's, most les- it's the most lesbian yeah. sign, followed by my sign, Taurus. Oh, I love okay. Taurus. Taurus, I'm a Sagittarius. Right. I love oh. Taurus. I think we were saying that we were talking the other day about Taurus astrological are great. signs. I think Sagittarius, we were saying, was the least gay sign. Um, really? My, <laughs> my boyfriend's Capricorn, and I'm Cancer, and everyone says of, it's a great mix. I have another, I have Ooh, a friend, yeah, Erica, that is. who's a lesbian, and she's a Sagittarius. I don't think I've met lesbian. I think you're my first lesbian really? Sagittarius. Because yeah. Sagittarius is usually supposed to be kind of like adventurous and philosophical. Oh, there you go. That's I feel like that's kind of lesbian Yeah, that is. How do you usually <laughs> meet women? Like when... Um, I, well, I'm engaged. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. That's thank amazing. You. And I met this girl on Tinder as Work. I've met most. Work. <laughs> Tinder is great for that. I was in a relationship for two years from Tinder. Yeah. Tinder's... No, maybe a year. Something. Tinder is good. I mean, yeah. I'm about Instagram the... is how I met my boyfriend. I mean, you know, we're, we're digital girls living in a digital yeah. world. What's the first thing I that you I find it say? offensive. You offended me. <laughs> Well, because I called you a girl. Yeah, I, mean, I don't care. I, gay men call inanimate objects girl. What do you? Ha- what's the first thing you like? Reach out to on Tinder? Um, what, like, what's my first line? Yeah, like, do you customize it to their profile? I always say, "Hey, how are you?" Me when too. I was on Tinder, I yeah. would say, "Hi, how are you?" Because I, I tell Emma, you wouldn't walk up to someone at a bar and say, "Hi, listen, I just wanted to let you know that I also enjoy this and that." Like, yeah, it's such a I weird like way to answer that. Just hi, how are you? Just like a casual hi, how are you? I had been doing that, but Tinder, Tinder's been going well. But then I was on the that one for creatives. Oh, Raya? Like yeah. Oh. But then that one, when I would say, hi, how you doing? That wasn't... Police would come to your house and arrest you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's a there's a surplus of pretentious assholes. Yeah, I gotta like, yeah, they, come I up mean, with it. Already, if you're on Raya, yeah. your application has been sent. Yeah. Sent to who? I know, Sent I know. to what? And then Someone also, like, with gay job. men, it's like, what? I, the one great thing about Grindr is, like, whether you're a CEO or you're living under a bridge, every gay man uses Grindr. Grindr, yeah. It. I wish we had a Grindr. Like, I don't that know was if it works. More sexual. Do you I think know. it would work? Yeah, do you think it could? I used to go, I went on Craigslist before like you know going around oh looking for because, like casual sex which is something i'm not even into but i was thinking i wanted craigslist because i was like you know it's like you know they're gonna be freaky you know yeah. two things you yeah, know they're not true. gonna so be so freaky that they say that they're a model and they have a date at 7-eleven when she's 200 pounds overweight yeah. what? not a that supermodel happened? i responded to this ad i said i'm a supermodel i can't find anyone to take me seriously because of how i look so i was like i'll take oh, you seriously my god i would just go for like the content well i believed that we exchanged a bunch of messages and then she had me meet her at a 7-eleven in queens and she showed up 45 minutes late oh and she was 7-eleven in queens she was uh she was maybe maybe like a foot model maybe or something like her hand model she's but an she eyelash was not a, model she was not a super Model. Yeah, I think, and then too, I felt too bad to just grind, leave. Grinder, which we should, she was, we could have Jinder, and maybe that would work with women and women because I feel like men and women. I don't know if Grinder works the same because men are just such pieces of shit, and that like we've just. I don't know of like a strange man coming to a woman's house at two o'clock in the morning. You met by exchanging dick pics. I mean, that just sounds like. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. maybe with two women lesbians. I mean, that's the same way with gay men. Like there is yeah. a kind of understanding. You know, I do think that there is like a general. That's why I find it easier to be slutty mm. as a lesbian because I do feel a little bit more safe. With I mean, I a lot, a sure. little bit. A I feel lot a, more safe. I love yeah. a lot more safe. The power dynamic with women, exactly. And also, it's not like you're gonna be. Like judged by another woman, it's like, right, bitch. Like you got down and dirty with me too. Exactly. You know that whole thing is gone. Yeah, and women, that's why I wanted Craigslist. I have a joke <laughs> that um, gay men owe lesbians everything because we'd have no rights if it wasn't for lesbians. Like, yes. like gay men were like, "We'll help you march," and then we just keep fucking. And lesbians are yeah. like, "Get up, get out of bed, get." The- Oh my God, my friend actually, so one of my really good friends, HL, and um, my fiance, Megan, we went to some, it was like some rally organization meeting he dragged us to, and it was organized by gay men, and they were like, 
so when should we meet? There was like cheese and wine and there were like a few like staunch lesbians in the back. And they're like, well, when should we meet again? And they're all like chatting. And then there's just a lesbian in the back that's like, same time next week. <laughs> thank you. And we're like, See, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's what gays need. We're too, we're too distracted. I know. You know, I'm... lesbians are like, shut up, and we're doing this again next week at five. I'll see you then. Yeah. I wish I was that lesbian. Same, but I feel same. like I'm like around the cheese board, like drinking white wine. <laughs> totally. You know? Distracted by the gays. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The they're gays fucking, distracted They're distracting. Yeah. Watching gay men try to get rid of a bird, that's what I realized. that Because they couldn't like shoo the bird away. They were all just like kept being like, bird, go away, go away. And they needed a lesbian <laughs> to just come in and go, get out. <laughs> yeah. They needed that. But I didn't do it because well, I didn't want to. You know, sometimes when you take the train, people will blast their music out loud, and it's annoying, but no one wants to say anything because like, you're like, oh, God, am I going to get murdered? And one time I was on the train, and this guy was like, he's a teenager, blasting his music, and everyone's like, don't say anything. Don't say anything. And yeah. this one lesbian just like <laughs> stood up, but she was like, hey, turn it off! Yeah. And he, like, ev- everyone's like, oh, yeah, no, no one's going to fight this lesbian. So like he turned it off. It was a wonderful moment. I, I mean, I'm a track. I like that. Like, I like that in a woman because oh, I'm not like You would have like loved – we have a friend named Gail. Yeah, you would have oh. loved Gail. Hi, Gail. All right, let's read some G- questions. Yeah, um, Gail's <laughs> like that big time. I love it. I feel so safe. Yeah, too bad. Gail just got out of Well, you know, you never know. Everything could fall apart tomorrow. When's so. the wedding set for? October 27th. We oh, were like, okay. we got to do it soon so oh, we don't break up. Right. Yeah. Then, you know, this ostratonin is still in us, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it is. oxytocin. Oxy- oxytocin. <laughs> this is well. We got to get to. I know we have to end at force, but I we do have a bunch of questions. But one thing that the per, the Canadian suggested, which yeah. I've never done before, she was talking about. She, she wants to try having a threesome, but I've never done that before. Have you done that before? I I have done it before. I've never done it before, but now I'm open to it. But I wish because I have. Do you see with, my face? I have been with sex workers in the past. And I like that. And I wish that we could just get a sex worker and make me feel more comfortable because then I don't want to have to go through all the. Does she want to use someone that you know? No. Just find someone like on a. She'd on have a... to recruit. She'd have to do. Okay. A, she'd have to do the recruiting. You think it's a bad idea? I feel like emotionally removed enough from it. I yeah. I feel like if you really like the per- like, I feel like it's good to keep those things for later down the line. I feel like Emma is sacrificing her needs and bending mm. over to do what this girl does. I really like her though. I gl- but I, I usually know- don't like someone's personality. What do you like about her? I like her personality and I like having sex is with she her. Funny? She's is really she... funny and really she is smart. really funny and she seems she's. Great conversationalist, okay. very easygoing, very pretty, and like very easy to get along. Like when yes. I met her, I she's was also in a weird a high, headspace. She's not super high maintenance. Like I've okay. dated people where I feel like it's just like so much work. She she's did not... have a train on her dress and about four fluffers, but I mean no. that wasn't that bad. Um, no, she was she was absolutely wonderful, and I think I'm like she's very pleasant. She's nice to my friends that she's met. Like I've dated. That's people. important. That's so important. I, so I, important. Did she did she think I was funny? Yeah, she thought you're hilarious. Then I like her. <laughs> the meetings are pretty easy. The thing is, like, I'm so. But she's so... seen all your stuff online too. It wasn't like that. Wasn't like the first time she saw you. I'm so protective of Emma that I want to make sure she's getting the best. Yeah, for what's yeah. For and Emma. we had a little problem before. Okay, it's been a couple uh, blips, snafus. <laughs> That's an interesting yeah. new word. All um, right, let's read some questions. And there's one question that we have to get to, but I for I um, it's T- Tyler. T- what's the question we have to get to? Okay. She okay. He sent it to your email. Okay. This is not this one, but um, I'm listening to the most recent podcast. I'm digging it. Just wanted to say, I love Emma's idea about doing more LGBTQ news on the show. Listening to hilarious debacles is entertaining, but I would personally enjoy hearing more from you guys about what's going on in the world or touching on various topics that are in the news. Well, Here's, okay. I don't know anything. That's, I this mean, is, I know. <laughs> this is what I'll say. I I do listen to the news. I watch the news. I get yeah. my news stories from a bunch of different places. I think the one thing I love doing about this show, and the one thing I'm exhausted by, mm, is the news. I know. I'm right. exhausted by the news, and I think it's important if we could bring in LGBT rights and 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 news and talk about those things. But this, to me, this podcast was specifically so that Emma and I could come and just talk freely about our lives right. and if it comes in it comes in and if it doesn't it doesn't i'm not interested in doing shows where it's like today we want to talk about this yeah topic. yeah it, it, to me like it's like either. there's enough of it yeah so, other people can do that i feel better. like if it comes in naturally we'll obviously do it but well, outside was, of that i'm not really and zara works at a magazine where they cover news and they've been I on their website right. but i hate it i don't i don't hate the magazine <laughs> but i hate like i don't consider myself a journalist i'm much more of a writer right. and i love to like if it was up to me, it would just be like 
interviews with really interesting people. Like, I would like to talk to, like, a schizophrenic and ask them, like, sure. if their meds are, like, making it hard for them to have an erection. Which, mm. oh, or, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Answer, you know? <laughs> but, like, those kind of things are, are interesting to me or, like, interesting confessional essays or sure. stories or advice. Like but I don't want to I don't. I'm not into the, the news. And I think we bring on a very wide variety of guests on this show that allow us to explore different people's lives. And I'm, I'm frankly more interested in doing something like that. Although I'm glad that he wrote in and said he, he, he thinks that would be something interesting because Emma suggested it. And now I'm like, I did no! suggest it. But, but I, I, maybe it's like a special weekly thing. And if it comes in organically, but just it go does. to Go Magazine site and look at the news because there's other people that do the news. There's right? other people that do the We definitely do the news. And I'm not saying it's, it's not important. Right. But because we are living in, like, we all know that the world sucks and that the world is like, we're, there's just different things. And it's on Twitter, things. it's on YouTube, it's, it's on, on this, TV, I it's like on to, Facebook. Yeah, I like to curate content that's more like voice. I think that what we need right now in this time is like just different voices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, especially as a gay person, it can be so sad and depressing and there's this pressure to like comment on what's going on. But sometimes you just want to read a dating article where you don't have to change the pronoun in your head. And also you sometimes know? I just so want to laugh. I do more of that. Sometimes yeah, I me just want to laugh. Me too. And not having to change the pronoun actually is like such a huge, like little things like that can be, are very like accessible and feel empowering. The, yeah. I was at a wedding this weekend and it was a heterosexual wedding, but she didn't have the um, bridesmaids march with the grooms. And, like, you know how normally the bridesmaids take, like, the arm of the guy and you all walk out? Like, do two two oh, yeah, when yeah. leaving? She didn't do that. It was just single file. And I was like, oh, we're not doing that. And she was like, no, fuck the patriarchy. Yeah. But a little thing like that, I was like, oh, thanks, Ashley. You know, yeah. it's very nice. I mean, that's because I used to write for, for Elite Daily for years and years. And then it was there that I would just write regular, fun, interest, what not interesting, but like I would just write a lot of People articles are so hard and content. I, I hate myself. Yeah, <laughs> I'm also off antidepressants, which is like really hard. But anyway, so the self esteem's like we got to have you co- come back to talk about that. Oh yeah, I'm really into my antidepressants. Oh, right now. what are you? I'm on, on Wellbutrin and Zoloft. Oh, uh, Welloft. Um, yeah, I that was my last combo. I love Welloft. Yeah, That's it's a good great. one. And Mateo's on. I mean, um, I had some Zyrtec this morning for my allergies. Good for you. I, I don't even know what it would be like going off my pills. Have you been on for a while? Quite a bit, yeah. 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 I mean, but, it's so I mean, helpful, though. But you just said I've had enough. I have been on antidepressants for over 10 years. Me too. And I just got to a place where I was like, I can't tell what's... And then I was adding things, and then I was on Cymbalt. Like, I went off the Zo- Zoloft, Wellbutrin, Welloft combo, and, like, I started taking Cymbalta... And then mixing it with this and that. And I was like, nothing feels like it's working. I think I need a reset. But I am on Vivance. Oh, I take Vivance. Oh, my God. Yeah, I love it. I just started. Oh, it's fantastic. It, yeah. It's for ADD, but it doesn't give you the... No. It just kind of levels you out. Yeah, because I can't be trusted with Adderall. Bob. Me neither. I can't be trusted with Adderall. <laughs> I used to snort it a lot. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, it was a real problem. Me too. I would snort it all the time and do college shows. And then I had Emma, to stop. your life is so... This is a long time ago. That's a nice word to use. But it this is. is a long time ago. But I remember I had to get off the thing because yeah. I had snorted Adderall and I couldn't slow down. And I was out of college where the kids oh, were way mellow. And I was like, All right, I got yeah. and like I knew in my head, I was like, change to their tempo, change their tempo. And I couldn't. Yeah. So it was like just like I was watching a car crash. So I mean, it takes away like especially performing and, and public speaking for me. It takes away like my ability to meet the audience. Exactly. When they're at, like I shove it in their face. Right. If they're not like in hyperspeed, then um, I think we have time for one more question. Yes, we Sorry, guys. No, I'm just like blah, blah, blah. We, blah, we, blah, blah, we, blah, blah, we unfortunately no, we have to we go have forth. To have so that's okay. what I'm saying. Because I right, want to hear more of what you have yes. to say. Um, and we'd love to have you back. Yeah. No, yeah. You please. should for sure come back. Okay. We'll have you on some time with Gail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My star-crossed lover. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. She's funny. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm trying to find the question. It's Okay. My question, finally. We're just going to skim the top part. My question, My question, finally. In New York, do you find a lot of closet gays and those who live double lives? In the 80s, when I came out – is this the right question, Tyler? In the 80s – when I came out, me and my friend would travel an hour and 15 minutes to a gay bar to meet other gays, and that was really the only way to meet other gay people. I feel the internet and smartphone, grinder, etc., has made it so easy for people to hook up and go back to their lives without much socialization. I have great memories of gay bars. It really helped me deal with being gay. In the 80s, living in a rural area, I felt like I was the only gay person. Going to the gay bars, I meet men just like me. Sorry to ramble on. So what is the question exactly? 
Do people still go meet people in gay bars? I think it's do people have dual lives, double oh, lives. Checks. Okay. D- so. Oh, this is the question. In New York, do you find a lot of closet gays and those who live double lives? Thanks, Tyler. Um, I don't. I well, when I cause I know I'm, I know one. I I know a He's couple. He's a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I guess I do. I guess I do. But I don't think it's as common. And I think that now there's different ways for people to like if they are closeted, they can like it. I don't know, like dating apps. You can hide your face and do all this other yeah, especially stuff. Especially in and... New York, you don't. I was thinking in the grinder community because mm. I have a friend. The community. You make it sound like it's a community center. <laughs> no, like, that's so crazy to me to say. The, the flowers the today. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in the grinder scene, per se, um, so I have a friend who he was having this problem where he could only get off if the person that he was hooking up with was leading a double life. Right. And I, I know, wow. I think I know it's a pretty comedian popular. who's in And that. it had to be for real? Like they couldn't yeah. fake it? Yeah, like he liked the businessman who would like show him pictures of his kids and his wife. And then he felt like, you know, like the hot mistress. I mean, right. you want to be, I mean, there is something sexy about being like the one that somebody turns for, sure. I guess. But well, it's all about being liked and seeking yeah. validation. Oh, and I find but he's in therapy and too, and addressing it. I would hope so. Good because he wouldn't be. Because I, the thing I think is the hottest is desire. So yes. if someone is leaving all that behind because they desire you and want you they so want bad, you. that's hot. Yeah. So I get that, but then if he can't separate it, then then it's going to be hard to have a relationship. Well, it is hard, yeah, for him. <laughs> has he had a relationship? He has, but then after like a few months, he gets really bored and right. he craves, you know. Those kind of like businessman hookups, like Maybe just in town for the weekend. Have a relationship, but then also get fucked by those guys on the side. So we just have to find someone that could be in an open relationship. Yeah, yeah. But he, I think he wants to like c- conquer. It's like intimacy. You right. know, it's stopping him. So right. I think there's some trauma. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Who's so I, not traumatized? Right. Well, so I guess, uh, I guess the answer to the question is no. We don't meet that many closeted gay people. No. No, but my friend who's on Grinder does. That, that was my answer. Her friend who's on Grinder <laughs> does. So they're out there. They're so, out there. Yeah, they exist. But I wonder sometimes if that is clause if they're actually closeted or if they're just guys that like to fuck other guys. I guess that's closeted. I think there's a lot. I think it's a very gray area with Grind. Stop yawning. That's so horrible. I think it's a very gray area with Grinder, and there's a lot of people who say they're into something and it's just a fantasy. Yes, and there's other yes. guys who are in relationships. There's threesomes, there's open relationships, there is there's just so many, it's overwhelming, and I'm so happy I'm not on it. Well, on that note, congratulations on I'm your an, engagement. Uh, congratulations. And where can, we, and where can everyone you. where can everyone find you and all your in your seven thousand articles? Um, well, I have a website, zaraberry.com, and then I'm on you know Twitter, Twatter. She's Facebook. related to Mary Berry from the Great <laughs> British Bake Off. I, I am, um, but yeah, so I'm just all over the internet. And check out her articles on Go Magazine too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And will you do our, your lesbian impersonation right Please. before we leave? Uh, I, uh, hello, that's it. I make my own water. Yeah, you are such a lesbian <laughs> named Tina who has a house in Provincetown <laughs> that I just want to like. Oh, that's what I want to hang out right? with. I did a show with Jessica Kearse this weekend. It was all lesbians, and they're such good audiences. They were they great. can be great. They they're can really be, yeah, when they're good, sweet they're good. and wonderful. When they're actors. good, they're good. <laughs> when they're, when they're bad, bad, it's rough. It's like it's the worst. Because sometimes the boy <laughs> ones are mean to me because they'll be like, oh, "I could do that," and they like kind of are like, hoo, hoo, hoo. "Yeah, yeah." Like I had a big butch woman. I was eating chicken wings, and she took one of my chicken wings. She just oh came up and said, "Give me a chicken wing," and took it. And I just sat I and I was like, kind of hot. I would have given, I was like, all right. She's like, dude, I'm taking one of those wings and took it. Bitch. Ooh. Anyway. All right. um, daddy, thank that you. was a daddy. Yeah, she <laughs> talked with me in that. And I was like, God, fucking. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. All right. Bye.